This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Do you drive a vehicle? Then you'll find AutoCorrect helpful, especially on Coach Charlie's Tip of the Week. Listen to our podcast with me, Coach Charlie Melton, on any podcasting platform or on the MPB Public Media app. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pivas, ASHE Certified Inspector and Inspect It Like a Girl, and Licensed Contractor Jeff Simmons from Houseworks. And today, we want to hear from you. Talking today about the fact that it got, it became winter overnight. It's chilly out right? there. And, and, and so there's winter things coming. And, and I did have a winter thing that I did this past weekend. I'm going to tell you guys about the... Um, after I hear what Pam had going on this weekend, because I've heard you've had some uh, very exciting times recently. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Which exciting time are you talking about? At work. <laughs> yeah. That's all we know, Pam. At work. Hey, tell me about it. Let's get clear. It's all work. It's all work. It's all right, work. It's all work. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Climbing under a house or in an attic recently? Anywhere? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was under a house yesterday. Really? Anything fun? Do you find any critters? Um, no. Uh, it was actually well done. It was, um, yeah. I, I, and I, I was surprised. I woke up this morning. I thought there was no mold and mildew under there. And that's really weird. Yeah, that's here good. Here in the South. So. Y'all did hear it. The inspector said something looked pretty good. Yeah, it looked pretty good. They yeah. did. Um, I did recommend something. And, Jeff, when I walked in, Thanks, they Jeff. had um, the floors were curling. They were. Yep. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Yep. And so my first thought was, I bet you there's insulation under there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure enough. Oh. Get down there and they've insulated all the floor joists. And so their floors are going to curl. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah, everybody hear that insulation in the south under your floor. Yeah, and I was talking to homeowners actually moving up to Nashville, and I was like, you know, when you get up to Nashville, you better have insulation in your floor cavities. Well, but down here... Now, um, I don't mind, Pam, ride with me on this, and, and I don't know for a fact, but this is my, my thinking. I'm okay with the insulation as long as I have air movement. Under the insulation? No, well, no, or just over. under the house. Yeah, just, under the house. Just air moving in that in that space. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> my issue with that is that all you're doing is moving around wet air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. This is why we have two people on the show. And well, nothing. you know, I've just seen through the years. I've, I've never seen, and and I've, I'm open to it. Maybe one day I'll see that where there's insulation in a floor cavity that's not soaking wet. Huh. Okay. I'm open to that. And this was the ground was dry. Um, they had had some water going underneath there. They're going to have to deal with that. Oh, okay. But when I walk into a house and the floor, those oh, yeah. beautiful wood floors are look like an ocean. Yep. Oh, no. Then oh, yeah. you've got now, a moisture problem. The good thing about that, and my good buddy Randy Chapman will testify to this, when, when, the, when the problem is cured, mm-hmm. when you take care of that moisture, those floors will, will lay back they'll down. They'll sit right true, back yeah, down. That humidity so, will pull from that board right. and it'll lay back out. I saw a friend of mine one time, he had peaks on his floor uh-huh. and he sanded them. Well, the, guess what happens yep. when they go back to being dry yep. is that then he had little dips you in got every divots. one. It. Yeah. Little divots in right. the floor. Now, it's a different story if you have water on top. Yes. It's right. a total different story. Then you're you're on the phone to, you know, your good neighbor or you're in good hands or whoever you have right. uh, because you need to you need to file a claim. Right. Because right. when they when they curve up. That's right. In the right. middle. That's right. They're not going to sit back down. No. <laughs> well, look, I wanted to uh, finish a story that I started here. Uh, I guess it's about a month ago. I was telling you guys about my dishwasher. And I've had this dishwasher for seven, eight years, right? I've repaired this thing five times, okay? I, the, the, the little electronic board I've replaced twice. Then, uh, most recently, the dishwasher got a leak. And I thought at first it was the seal. I ordered a seal. Uh, it was not the seal. I tried the pump and everything underneath. There was no leak there. Finally, I gave up the ghost. And I wanted to admit this on the show, Okay. As the guy that loves DIY, I bought a new dishwasher. Bought a, I was going to say, did all those repairs equal the cost of a new I, well, dishwasher? I was, I was thinking the same thing. Well, I did all the repairs, so 
But I'll say this. Uh, uh, one of the things I did not know about dishwashers, I had the dishwasher I had, I'm going to go ahead and say names here. Mm-hmm. Okay. The dishwasher I had was a Maytag is a very nice dishwasher. Very, very nice. And, and, uh, but it had this leak. Well, when the dishwasher repair people came to me and said, I want to, um, came to me and said, we're going to replace it. They said, I know where your problem is, where your leak is. I can tell you right where that old dishwasher leaked. Well, the Maytag washer was a steel inside and the new washer is plastic inside. And I thought, oh, well, does that make one better than the other? He said, your leak was on the seal of the metal where they put the metal Mm. together uh, on on the on the yeah in the dishwasher right. inside. So the sides of the dishwasher inside are that shiny metal, right? Almost chrome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they're put together with. Uh, there's like one half, the top half, and then the bottom half. Well, it'll leak at that seal on the metal tub dishwashers, but not on the plastic tub dishwashers. Those things don't happen. How interesting! I didn't know that. You know, when I've I, never known that. Yeah. I love my dishwasher. I put in a new dishwasher. Um, I can't even remember how long. It was during COVID. Whenever, you know, I finally decided I'd get a, get a new one, you know, and I love it because it's got a pan underneath it. So if it leaks, it won't run. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> That's good. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So I solved that problem. All right. We've got Carol on the phone right now. has got an issue with her water heater. What's going on, Carol? Hey, thank you for t- taking my call. We have three hot water heaters in our house, a gas and two electric. And about a month or so ago, we stopped getting sufficient hot water to our master shower, and it would just be tepid. And we have a recirculating pump, and so when we cut that on, we have hot water everywhere now. And so I'm wondering, is has one of the hot water heaters gone out, the element gone out, or is the gas one the only one that's heating water, or exactly where to look? to know because if we cut that recirculating pump off which we want to do because it's real expensive to run it um, i know we're, we're going to lose hot water heater i mean hot water to the master shower again how so, far is the master shower from the water heater it is it is the farther it's from the hot water heaters which are in the attic all three of them are right next to each other in the attic but it it was fine for like five years you know we would yeah. get hot okay. water so you've got two electrics and a gas all interconnected in the same space in the attic. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Man, I'd yank those suckers out of there and put me a gas tank on it so fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so what could this be? a heck of a lot cheaper than trying to run two electrics. Well, yeah, and they sound like, are they all tank? Yes, they're all yeah. tank, and yeah. we did buy when we when we built our house. They're supposed to be ultra high efficient, insulated. Sure, you know that kind of thing. Do yeah, you... and I'm you know I'm sure they are, but I, I'm I'm hearing a water heater went out. Is what it sounds. Yeah, like. or one of the elements on the electric. Right. I know you have. Don't you have two elements? One for the Should. top and That's one right. for the bottom. Yep. So one of those elements on that water heater has gone out. Yeah, Carol, do you guys do any DIY stuff, or do you hire contractors? Uh, we use contractors unless it's just minor little stuff. Right. This replacement. I don't know if if anyone uh, where you are does this, but replacement of the element on an electric um, water heater. It, there's a YouTube video, and it can be done. It's not terrible. No, it's not. It's not. I've done it. It's yeah. it's not terribly hard. How old are these units? They're just about five years five, old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it sounds like one of the elements has mm-hmm. gone out on You'd it. You have and to it pinpoint be, which one. If you're at five years, you're still in manufacturer warranty because it's usually a seven yeah. year. Um, cycle okay. on that, so that's where I would start is with the manufacturer to see if there's a warranty issue that's on great. it. That's great, great. And man. it could also be a recall on it, so you can take that uh, model and serial number and put it into a recall database and see if there's a recall on those units. Google it. Thank you so much. That's great information. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Carol. Good, Good luck. luck. Let's keep on moving real quick. We've got Scott on the line in Jackson. What's up, Scott? Hey, well, I noticed that in one of my bathrooms, I have stone floors in my uh, lower level. The stone uh, was just staying on it. So every time I go in the bathroom, the floor will be wet. So I called a plumber, and he you know, it was kind of expensive to come out and check it. But he said, 
they have a, a underground pipe leaking. So yeah, that's what it sounds like. So I did. Well, so well, uh, I did some googling, and I know what I did. I always keep the toilet seat up. I always keep the toilet seat up for my grandsons, you know, when they were there. But they weren't there, so they didn't be on the floor. But so I shut the toilet seat down, and no more problem. For say dry. It talked about in the Google. What I googled it is looking like for like a water fountain in the house, a source of water in the house. And it dawned on me, something with the AC. I don't know why, but I put the toilet seat down. I'm a wet floor. Hmm. Well, <laughs> okay. Do this then. Turn the water off to the toilet. Okay. And leave the toilet lid up and see if see if you still get water on the floor. Yeah, and it could uh, be. Um, I just it, it, changed it, out my fill valve. Yeah. On my, we're getting ready to post that video. Yeah. But if you're, if the gaskets at the base right. of the inside of your toilet components, if they're over five or six years old, mm -hmm. they deteriorate, and you can well, end up with a slow leak under that, the tank. That and those little blue tablets that oh, don't do everybody it. wants to don't put in their tank. Don't do it. Stuff. Do it. Don't it put stuff, it. stuff in your tank. It, it, Just it, stop it. it. <laughs> it eats all the plastic. <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what? you say, Scott? Uh, I'm saying no. The leak wasn't over near the toilet. No, the base of the toilet was dry. It was dry. Well, oh, yeah, but in front of the sink. Well, but you said when you close the lid to the toilet, you don't the get. The floor was dry. Yeah, you don't get any more. I have water. a thought. Um, if I, I want you to look at one specific place, Scott, and I found this before and in in other situations, the bolts that are holding the tank on. The, the ones, okay, you know, you have the bowl section, you know, the toilet's in two sections. You have the bowl and then you have the tank, right? The the two bolts specifically that are holding the tank to the bowl, I've seen this a hundred times where they those leak. Those those two bolts leak. People think it's coming from this thing or that thing, or but those bolts can leak after a while. And I'll tell you, Scott, something to keep in mind. Water is never where water is. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it'll start, it, it'll, it's going to the lowest point in the room is what it's doing. Mm -hmm. And so it could actually be starting somewhere totally different and working its way over. I had a client recently who called me with a very similar issue. They had water in their bathroom. They couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, this was back, uh, it was a little bit after all of that insane rain we had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I went outside, and their gutters were f were full of junk, so the gutters were overflowing, and the water was coming in the sill right next to that bathroom. Uh -huh. So it really wasn't a bathroom issue. And I asked him, I said, have you had any water in there since it quit raining? <laughs> oh. And they were like, well, no. And I said, well, what I want you to do is I want you to wait for it to rain again. <laughs> And see if you have and, water. And see if you have water, because I really think the problem was coming from a totally different place. So, Scott, what I love about what you're doing is that you're trying different things to try to problem solve what it is. But I think Jeff and I are going to agree it's not the toilet seat. Right. <laughs> no. No. So, that's no. just con that. That's kind of it, secondary. It's, it's, yeah, I, I, I would I would eliminate my water sources. Your water exactly. And, and there's a cutoff on every water source in that bathroom, uh, with the exception of the tub, of course. But your your toilet and your sinks have stops on them. Um, and then so. if you've got a shower. Um, it could be that the water's getting out from there. I mean, it's just water. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, Scott. I hope that helps out, man. Try those. It's a, it is October. It could just be haunted. Maybe right. there's that's, a ghost in there, there using go. that toilet when you don't know it. Run, Scott. <laughs> Scott, run. <laughs> we want to hear from you. What's happening at your home? Send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHE Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and Licensed Contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. We've got a whole bunch of emails here that we got to get to, and one of them was, it's. It, I'm, I'm going to tell you the ending before I, I tell you the email. It says... Uh, if you were me, what would you do? Counting on you guys in all caps. Oh, Ooh. wow. So, all right, no so, pressure, Jeff. Right, no right. pressure. No pressure. 
<laughs> so here's the email. All right, we have travertine tile countertops in our kitchen. They're about 20 years old. Makes sense. The grout is stained, as are some of the tiles. I'd like to replace with granite or quartz. I don't want tile again. I also would like to get an undermounted sink instead of the top or uh, uh, on the tile one we have now. Okay. All mm-hmm. right. We had a couple of uh, companies come out and make bids. They both said the cabinets need to come out in order to replace the countertops. This is a non-starter. Without taking out the cabinets, they did not want to take it on. The cabinets were built in place by the owner, and although they look great, nothing is square. There would be no way to get them back in correctly. New cabinets are not in the budget. I let it go for a few years, and then a month ago or so, I tried finding someone else to bid again. This time, these folks said they would do it, but it was an insanely astronomical bid. bid. A total joke. (laughs) So what are my options? Could we lay something thin on top of the tile, paint the tile? I'm in North Mississippi. Are there any new things out there that may have emerged in the last few years but just not – Located in my area, I've seen some interesting but scary things on YouTube. Yeah, I've seen that too. I am not willing to try any of them yet. <laughs> if you were me, what would you do? <laughs> Counting on you guys. Counting on Counting you guys. On us. That's from Bunny. Okay, Bunny. Bunny. Okay, Bunny. You know, um, I'm not saying I've seen everything. Uh huh. Um, we've been doing this about 22, 23 years. Uh-huh. Um, I will tell you, I have seen a lot. Right. Well, and I can 99.999% of the time tell you those cabinets were built and then the countertop put on top. Yes. Okay? Yes. Not the other way. Not the other way around. (laughs) So with just that little fact being known, I can pull that countertop off without pulling the cabinets off. Yes. Now, where your issue is going to be, uh, I can picture your, your kitchen right now. You have travertine, which was insanely uh, popular back then. Mm -hmm. And then behind that, you have travertine backsplash. Probably. Uh, And then you filled the holes with grout and everything looked beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I pull that countertop, I'm going to also damage that backsplash. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But uh, there would be no reason why we could not pull those countertops, pull the backsplash, put in new countertop, uh-huh. And then, um, and then tile my my backsplash at that point, right? And do it in that order, okay. right? And you can. Um, I've done this before. Mm-hmm. Now at the big box stores, if you take in photographs and measurements, mm-hmm. they have this computer generated program that will show you kind of the look that Ooh. you might be looking for. Mm-hmm. And you can literally, if you're a DIY person, you can order your countertops there, and they will deliver them. Now you have to dis- you have to install it right at that point. So which means you need to have five people to help you carry it. <laughs> right. Well, that and you need to be a plumber and an electrician and yeah to get all that because right. remember everything has to be unhooked. Right. And, right. And re- I'm, uh, plumbing is just out of all the things that I do, it's the one I hate the most. Well, it's it's. Plumbing knows if you're not a plumber. It does. It really does. <laughs> it does, and it's going to send you back to the store five times. It's going right. to send you back, and it's going to leak on you. It right. is, and then you're going to get a hammer and hit it, and then you just lost <laughs> right. your whole day. Right. <laughs> it's so, just over. Yeah, well, there's a lot that goes in to, and I would say, too, if you got bids recently, some of that may be material cost. Do you think, Jeff? Yes. Our, our just like anything else, you know, this is... I get, I don't want to say in trouble, but I get when we start a house Mm -hmm. and if we sell it midterm, we give the new buyer a allowance sheet. Okay. And it it never fails. That is the price at the time. Mm -hmm. Well, my countertop people, my, my, plumbing supply people that they, they you can't just go pick that stuff and they're going to warehouse that for you for for you know three months four months while right. i'm building the house so when it comes time for delivery if there is a price increase it has to be passed on and and, and every time we turn the news on gas prices are not going down mm-hmm. right so just I the mean, delivery cost yeah well is yeah. Uh, let me ask you has material for something like granite has that gone up 
Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I didn't know Absolutely. if that had changed. I, I think it peaked. Some things are starting to, you know, wood prices are starting right. to come down. Wood, wood is that wood is where is don't. I don't want anybody to mis- jinx it. misunderstand what I'm fixing to say. Wood pricing right now is not our is not our issue. No, right. No. It, it's it's the delivery cost of mm-hmm. the wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the supply and demand of the wood. We still, you know, we can't get it. Right. Um, and I don't know if some gotcha. of that is by design. Right. Well, let's 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 go. I want to do a little DIY for Bunny here. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, she mentioned that uh, w- what other things can she do? Can she uh, uh, lay something thin on top of the tile? Yes, you can. And hang on just a minute, and I can tell you about that. But you mentioned also paint the tile. I- I've seen that a couple of times. And it, don't, it don't look good. Don't. Don't. Don't, don't do it. Well, don't. the first time you drag a fork or a knife across it, it's over. I yeah. don't like laying anything on top of it. I don't well, either. And, and you don't, I don't know how that's going to work. It's not going to be even. Um, new things that might emerge. Now, it says lay something on top of the tile, what you, what you guys are talking about. But what I was thinking, we had a guest in the show a while back. I'm not endorsing anything, but this is what the people do for a living. It was called Kitchen Tune-Up. And certainly they could do a, you know, a thing like for your countertops, right? Mm. Not that I know of. That was mainly like uh, uh, cabinetry, right? You know, but I was thinking maybe I mean, something. The the only thing I would even remotely consider, mm-hmm. uh, and it's going to be expensive, would be take a sheet of copper and put it over it. Uh, whatever you do is going to telegraph through that right. material. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be expensive. There's going to be issues of, you know, how do I attach it? How do I finish the edges? Right. And then coming back you know, in with an undermount uh, sink on uh, something uh, like that is going to be a mess. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a... I'm taking a, a round dowel and trying to put it in a square hole. Right. It's just... It'll work, but it's not going to look good. Right. Yeah. I would go with a complete replacement. Of if, course. If it were me. But yeah. it, and that's this is the problem I think most homeowners get into. I have this issue myself. Trying to find somebody to come and do it. Yeah, is, right. You just That's have, the bigger you, issue. You've got to be patient. You know what? There is another option that I saw the other day when okay. I was going through a big box. Of course, you can get the same thing at lumber places, whatever. But I saw that the big box was now selling sheets, big long sheets of butcher block. Butch, yeah, the yeah. butcher block. I've seen that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and butcher block is wood, can be cut, can be sanded, can be a lot. Of, in other words, mm-hmm. It's a, a lot easier product to work with than granite or, you know, just about any or the, tile or anything. The issues we have found with that. Now, mm-hmm. if your kitchen is small and you can use one piece to right. get from point A to point B, it's a mm-hmm. great. But if if you run into a space where your butcher block is not long enough. Oh, you've got seams. Now you've got a seam. Now you have an issue again. Okay. So, I see what you're saying. Okay. All right. Well, there was some some things that they but, can try. But that. yeah, I mean, you know, again, we're on the radio and it's hard to look right. at. It. Bunny, Bunny, uh, you're going to lose that tile when you bring it off there. Yeah. Uh, just go ahead and get over that. But no, somebody out there can replace that. That's right. And she she's in North Mississippi. Yeah. Okay. So you can call from yeah. anywhere from Memphis South. Well, yeah, and, so. and I go back to the big box thing. You can go in and they will help you design something, mm-hmm. and then they do have contractors that will come right. out. Yep. They'll double check your measurements. Right. They will give you a price, and then you can get on their list. It's not a horrible thing because you have recourse if something doesn't work out. That's you can the, call that that's store. Right. That's kind of one of the reasons I like that option. I don't always use that option, but it is an option. Right. Okay. Um, you know, let's take one more real quick. And uh, that's uh, Wakas and Mobile. What's going on, man? Um, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, good morning. Um, so I have my yearly inspection for my AC unit. Mm-hmm. And the guy came in. Everything was perfectly fine. Uh, he did, however, recommended me to put a UV light in the, um, in the HVAC unit. You know, it, he said that it's it reducing the damping and kills the bacteria and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I want to um, get your, you know, opinion about it. Uh, what do you think? He charged me six hundred and fifty bucks uh, to to add it. And did you already do it? No. Oh, okay. Um, we've talked about those lights here on the show before. Go, go ahead, hey, guys. What do you think? You know, I like the UV light. We we use them in 
uh, bathrooms to um, uh, control uh, mildew, j- just just what he said. Um, Six hundred dollar price doesn't scare me. Um, Meaning that's about what you would think. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's not unreasonable. No, I don't think so. And I'm gonna get on my box and talk about if your unit's not sealed up, that UV's not doing you a bit of good. Well, they're okay. You know, so how, how old is this? Uh, how old is the unit? Walk us. One year old. Oh, uh, and is it a new home? Yes, it's a brand new home. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, and you don't know if it's sealed up just because it's brand new, but it won't be as gross when you do go to seal it up if you'd like. Yeah, and I mean, you just don't know until you start. There's some things, intrusive things that you've got to do to make sure that it is. Some are, some aren't. I would say... You know, 85% are done correctly, 15% we find in new construction. They've just not been sealed up, and it's because they were in a hurry that day. Um, but the UV won't hurt anything. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just how important that would be to you. I personally, um, if I am maintaining my unit, my unit's in good shape, I'm not going to do that. Right. Um, that would be more of something I would do if I had health issues or there was something else going on in the house and I'm trying to problem solve. But, you know, I think it's really a personal choice. If that's something that you feel like you want to do, then do the research and, yeah. and put it in. Would I do it? No. And walk as if, if you ever go get your oil changed and they always bring out the air filter, you can see straight <laughs> through it and they promise you that you right. need a new one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what? Every time one of these folks comes to your house, there's a pitch. That comes with well, it. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned the air filter. Can, mm-hmm. can I tell a quick story? Sure. I bought a brand new truck. Uh-huh. Brand new. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, took it in for the first oil change, and uh, the guy comes out and says, "You need a, you need a new air filter." And I said, "I need a new <laughs> air filter." You know, the the truck had like three thousand miles on it. And uh, driving on gravel roads the whole time. Yeah, and and I said, well, let me let me look at the filter, you know, because that's what my dad said. Right. If you can look through it, it's probably clean, right? And uh, or good enough. Yeah, yeah. So of course we 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 look at it, and it's you know it looks it's very clean. You look right through it. I can't see a speck of dirt on right. it anywhere. So obviously we did not put a new air filter. Right. In. Right. Yeah. And th- but they'll come with that every time and walk us. It's no different in any other sort of service out there. If an air conditioned person is going to stop by your house, they're not making any money unless they do something except for the service fee. Yeah. What's so. their percentage on that sale? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no. I know, I know. You, you know, I, I really, I don't like the way that sounds, <laughs> but unfortunately it may be true. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but it's not going to hurt anything. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope that helps out, man. Let's go ahead and. Uh, it does. It does. Good. It does. Thank you. Thank you. We're still looking to hear from you. If you want to get your home improvement projects on right now, send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHI Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl and Licensed Contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. Uh, uh, what was I... You were going to Java. No, Java said that. Yeah, I kind of threw you off when we were yeah, coming back. <laughs> coming back from the break. But no, I did a little digging on the UV lights um, yeah. for the HVAC system because I was curious. I was like, wow, that's kind of kind of crazy. So a quick Google search and along with all of the different brands that you can buy and, uh, you know, the companies pushing them, there was one big uh, headline with why UV lights and HVAC systems are a scam. And there was a whole really? article, nice. and you know, <laughs> nice. just, you know, it was just a whole thing where it's it's some it's some national. I'm not gonna call any names, but it's a national HVAC company, and I guess they're not selling the UV lights. And it's one of their big headlines was why UV lights are HVAC systems. Uh, they didn't they didn't get the contract. You know, they, they didn't get the contract. Yeah, they didn't get the contract. On it. <laughs> you know, it's 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 funny you mentioned that Java. The only place we've ever used a UV light, and we do it in our. Um, handicap houses is is in the bathroom in the restrooms yeah Yeah. um interesting yeah well and it reminds me you know you talk about that scam 
Uh, Jeff, you've probably seen this before, but somewhere sometime back in the 70s and 60s, somebody, somebody was going door to door selling humidifiers. Oh, yes. For air, yeah. HVAC systems. In yes. Mississippi? Yep. Yes. Yep. See them all over yeah. Northeast Jackson. Are you serious? Yep. yep. Yep, humidifiers. There'll be a humidistat we need control. Hum- I know what you need humidity for here in Mississippi. I remember, <laughs> I remember my my mother constantly putting a bowl of boiling water on the stove. Uh huh. All the time for yeah. humidity. Yeah. Well, in the winter time. I guess that's when she did it. Yeah, I don't it'll know. dry it out. Like yeah. I, d- I have to do that at my house when I'm burning all that wood. Yeah. Because okay. it, it dries everything yeah. out so bad. But my God, put that! I mean, I can't tell you the things that I saw growing yeah. <laughs> in the air conditioning system because people were adding water. <laughs> All right, number to call is eight seven seven MPB ring. Kathleen's on the line in Osaka. I hadn't spoke to Kathleen in a minute, and you got a gutter issue, Kathleen? Well, I, it's actually a two part thing. All right, like, uh, one sort of a Halloween story that Pam would love. Well, you better make it quick. Over, right before, huh? <laughs> I said you better make it quick. <laughs> okay. It is quick. A couple years ago, it was almost Halloween weekend, I had my stair, uh, stairwell insulated and paneled. I've got cats. I was missing one or two. Couldn't find them. I didn't hear anything. A couple nights later, I heard, oh, oh this terrible little <laughs> meow in the wall. So I called the guy back. He goes, oh, uh, yeah, I can get so-and-so out to see you. I said, well, is he trustworthy? He'll nail the cat or two in the, wall, in, the, in the wall. He said, no, he'll just probably hit on you. It'll be all right. That is professionalism to the T. Uh, it's a Halloween story. Anyway, <laughs> I have decided to go. I thought Pam would like that one. Um, yeah, it happens about- to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's a different kind of hit. Right. <laughs> uh, and away we go. Yes. We, we don't have to we're done. Right. <laughs> uh, Listen, All right, Kathleen. Um, I've decided to go without gutter. I'm going to let the roof uh, guide the wa- a water flow. And put in the French drain, so what do I have to do? Now, is there anything that I should do in prefix to the putting the drains in or having to put in and what kind of rocks to put in? And it, it's just been overwhelming to me. I have a thought. Yeah. Put in gutters. <laughs> well, that sounds good. But the downpour, uh, downpours we get out here in the country, just uh, a couple months ago, I got like two feet of rain. Did you uh, so, what, Did you have a little bitty gutters, or did you have good six-inch gutters on there? I had no gutters on there, and it was going on the ground and undermining God knows what. Yeah. But uh, I've got to get it under control, because it looks like I'm going to stay in this house. <laughs> Well, I like it or not. What do you guys think? Well, let let me give you my opinion on gutters. Um, Okay. I like gutters um, if uh, they are at least a six-inch case style or or better. Um, I Only if they are kept clean and only if they are installed properly. Other than that, I hate gutters. Yeah. So, okay. meaning, yeah. if if I'm in the middle of the woods, uh, we we I I personally live in the middle of the woods. So, gutters yeah. gutters on my house is is um, it's a challenge because they always fill up with with leaves, um, especially now. Yeah. So if if you are going to have gutters, they must be maintained. They must be installed properly, meaning the downspouts no no further than 30 feet apart, uh, depending on how many roofs are going into that one downspout, and so on and so forth. Um, would I do a a French drain instead of gutters? Absolutely not. Um, uh, it's much more expensive to have that installed properly. And do you need a French drain or do you need a, a drain tile and hard pipe? And there is a difference. So, 
my, I, if I'm going to do a drain tile and hard pipe long before I do a French drain. So. Yeah, and you just and I think one of the things that Kathleen may have a challenge with is finding someone to help her maintain those gutters. Yeah. So if you're looking for something that would be uh, cost efficient as well as something that you don't have to necessarily maintain, I would look at some landscaping uh, possibilities that would allow right. you to get the water away. I personally really like to put in things that I can see. So if I start putting underground drains in mm -hmm. and French drains in, I don't know what's going on down there. <laughs> right. And after, well, after a time, you forget about you it. You are exactly right. And they if get I, clogged up. If, well, French drains you, have to be right, treated like right, gutters. That's right. If yeah. you can handle that with, with proper landscaping, proper drainage, let Mother Nature handle it. Yeah, and just and figure out a way to direct. I did that at my house, it built in 1958. Mm -hmm. I've got gutters in some places, and in some places I'm just directing that water away from the house. Because what is my measurement, Jeff? What do I have to have a fall? Ten, ten, uh, ten feet out from the house, I want uh, six, uh, inches, six of fall. inches of fall. Yeah, we Rule were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. When a house is built on a flat on flat land like a lot of the older ones are, mm -hmm. yep. what I ended up having to do was come in, and I actually just brought in some slag and built it up around sure. the edge of the house. And now when the water comes off the roof, it hits that slag and drains right off. Yep. Wow. Uh, not a bad idea because slag is also, that would be a diverter for the rain so it wouldn't eat into the ground right in front of your house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll pack in as right. that rain yep. hits it. All right. Sure. Thank you, Kathleen. We appreciate it. we got a couple of more things to get to here. Uh, email. Uh, this one came in, and I have trouble with two exterior doors. Number one is a French door. It closes unevenly. The edge that meets the stationary door does not line up properly. Okay. I can force the bottom end some, but not all the way. Okay. I have checked hinge screws. Distance between the door and frame seems uniform all the way around. Um, any any thoughts there on that one? So, yes. Um, close the door. Uh -huh. Stand inside the home looking at the door. There is a margin all the way around that door. Right. The distance between the door and the jam. Right. That margin needs to be the same all the way around it. Uh -huh. Now, if my margin is bigger at the top of the door than mm -hmm. at the bottom, that means the top of my door is sagging. Yes. So I want to suck the top of that door back in. Pull the screw out, get a longer screw, get, reach in there and get get some more two by four, two by six framing and and suck that door back into that jam. Yeah, so what are you saying? Try to square it up. A longer screw, which grabs more wood on the other side, will pull the door a little bit on the top if you do that on the top hinge. That's right. Right. If it's if if your margin is larger at the top than the bottom. Uh, there's some other things you can and do. The margin he's talking about is like the light that you can see around the door. Yes. Or, yeah. yeah, the distance between the door and the jam. Mm -hmm. Some other things you can do is pull the hinge off totally, put some washers behind it that will shim the hinge out. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 like it's like um, it's like playing the guitar. That's you got to fine tune mm -hmm. it at this point. A little right. bit every yeah, yeah just to. Yeah. And because well, if the door's being used a lot, like there's a lot of children running in and out. That's right. <laughs> well, and, and from someone who's done this before, don't jam all the shims in one place at one time. Nah. These things are, these are micro movements. Yes. Um, yes. You know, that's a good way to put it. Um, so another thing, another door he's got, door number two would not catch and lock until I really loosened up one set of hinge screws. Too loose to leave that way. Yeah. Any suggestions? Yeah. Again, it's it's that fine tuning. Yeah, add, add you might want to put some bolts behind there. That well, would be a place that you could maybe put some washers washers behind, behind the, the yeah. hinge. Yeah, right. I would also look at the strike plate on that one. If yep. a door sags over time, it will start to miss the center of the strike plate, mm -hmm. and I, you notice it. Everyone's seen this when you have to pull up on the doorknob a little bit That's to right. get it to click. Yep. That's what's happened. And so if you close it, it won't actually engage, and it'll just come right back open. So you pick up the door a little bit with the doorknob, and it clicks. So the issue is uh, either 
you you get the door back right square, as square as you can so that it fits the hole properly. Or another option, if you can't do that, is move that strike plate down just a smidge. Yep. Or you can buy a long strike plate. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Do that With too. a long hole. <laughs> right. When that when that door unit was shipped to that house originally, and I don't care if it was yesterday or 25 years ago, that door worked properly. Mm -hmm. Then it was installed. If it was not installed properly, over time it is going to start sagging, uh, i.e. when that door was installed, there should be blocking behind each hinge. Right. A lot of times that's not happening in the build world. So, Well, for those of you who, who, who are not real familiar with it or DIY, uh, if you've never put in a door, I know it looks like, okay, there's a, there's a hole in the wall, and I have this thing here that's the same size as the hole. How hard can it be? Right. It's one of the hardest things it you'll is. do in a home I think is, I'm is framing a door. Trim carpentry, which is what this is. Mm -hmm. Evil. It's, it's hard. There's math involved. There's precision hey, involved. Listen, there's skill involved. Tw 20, 20 years ago, we installed a Gothic door mm -hmm. in a church in Madison. Wow. Two days. Wow. Two mm -hmm. days. Just to get to, the door in. To get that door working properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a skill. It, oh, yes. It's, it's, it's definitely a skill. And I've tried and tried to get it, and I just don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you can email with your questions, comments, or just tell us what project you're working on to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Vicki's on the line, and she's on the road. What's going on, Vicki? Hi. My husband and I are sitting here, and we're in the car. But we heard you speaking of flag. And we have a situation like uh, the lady that called before, the, the stuff pooling and making a ditch in front of our house when they're way out in the country. Yes, ma'am. And I want to know what is slag and how, where will I go to get it? Slag? <laughs> it's uh, a byproduct of steel. It is. It's, it's, uh, is it the, is it black? It's a gray. It's, it's a, a gray, dark, yeah. dark gray color. It, you, it's the, whenever they're producing steel, yeah. making steel, it's the byproduct. You don't necessarily have to use slag. You can use limestone. Right. Um, you can use. Um, oh gosh, there's another word that, another piece of stone that that escapes me right now. Now, if I was putting this around my house, I would use uh, limestone. It's it's because uh, it's pretty and white. It, it's pretty. It's a, and it's expensive. Right. Um, but it's it's a very a good product to do hardscape around your house. Yeah. And yeah. slag is Thanks. just the cheapest option. Sure. Yeah. You can get a truckload of it, a yard or a couple of yards delivered. That's what I did. Right. I dumped it in my driveway and I spent the next couple of weeks with my wheelbarrow. Shoveling. <laughs> Shoveling. <Yeah. laughs> Limestone, for instance, is going to run you about uh, 1500 bucks a truckload. Yeah. And I think the slag was like four or 500 bucks. Sure. Oh. Yeah. It's a little oh. different. Appreciate it. Thank you. Love your show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And you can get that kind of stuff at a lot of different places. But if you find a home place that has, you'll drive by and you'll see mounds of things. Right. And that's where they get their That's usually stuff. where, you know, there's a stone place here in town. Right. And they were getting it from the steel manufacturer out there in the Flowood in area. Flowood, that's right. right. And so they just delivered it. I mean, it was not that big of a deal. I will say this, mm -hmm. is that you really don't want that where you're going to have a lot of heavy water runoff. I would come in with a different product with that because the slag will, um, the particles from that will uh, wash a little bit. But once it finishes washing and it's packed in real good, it's a good mm -hmm. product. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more aesthetic, I think Jeff is, you know, you're going to want something like that. Right. But I'm going to tell you from the street, you can't tell if it's slag or if it's that, that, That's right. That's right. Yeah. And if you're going down a uh, if you're going down going down a gravel driveway and you drive up, you're not going to know if it's slag or if it's limestone. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Except your pocketbook will know. Right. Well, Jeff knows. <laughs> Jeff knows. Right. Hey, all right. So I've got a, a quick email here, real quick. Uh, how to find the sewer field line? 
Now, get this. Uh, uh, the sewer field line got crushed years ago by bush hogging. Right. And they've tried everything, every product to find uh, using root kill and dye and still no luck finding this this uh, sewer field line. Tried digging up the dirt and following the line, but still no luck with a shovel. Is there another way that he might find this line? Is there something that you may use, uh, Pam? That- no, we don't scope lines. What and that I, would be the only thing I could I mean, think. You're is going just to get dig. A, I mean, it's what eight one one come and do this for you? No, no, because it's they're, they're not they're not going to find a sewer line because there's nothing to detect. Right. Um, I mean, the, the obvious thing is you're going to dig where it's wet when it shouldn't be wet. Right. Yeah. You know. It yeah. hadn't rained in a month, and this area is wet. Or green. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's really, really green over there. I mean, we, we, you know, we 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 dig them all the time on every new house. We've got to dig and find right. the the sewer tap. How far how, how far down should people look for like a line now a like sewer that? tap? Now, but you were talking about a fill the line sewer on a field septic. line. Okay, yes. uh, that's going to be a little bit different. A sewer mm. line, man, that's something that goes down there. Sure. Well, it, it depends on where the pipe is right I mean, okay so we talking it, 18 it, inches or six feet here? well it again yeah. depends Mine's six feet it, it depends mm-hmm. on where the pipe is in the street mm-hmm. you know that, wow. that that round cap that you see that you yeah. drive over all the time that's where your tap goes into that sewer pipe mm-hmm. okay. yeah it just depends on how but on finding something like that i would probably um if you cannot find it yourself just call a company that installs them get them out there yeah oh that's a good idea no I they'll mean, find it just call the experts because they do that all the time yeah there you go all right fix it 101 is a production of mississippi public broadcasting think radio and is funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you our show is produced by mr java chapman our call screener today was charles arnold for Pam Pibus and Jeff Sammons, I'm Jason Klein. Join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101 only on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android.